Adam Ragusio made an absolutely elegant, yet simple pizza recipe that you can make in a nonstick pan. I knew that I had to try this recipe out, but of course I needed to make it a little more anabolic. So I thought to myself, how can I fit this into my daily macros to where I could eat pizza every single day and have it be simple yet delicious. So today I will be trying my anabolic pan pizza right next to Adam Ragusea's full calorie pan pizza and see what the differences are both in the macros and in the taste. And we're just going to enjoy this meal that we can be able to eat every single day going forward. My name is Nick or Exercise for Cheat Meals where I make anabolic recipes and also review anabolic recipes. And today we are doing both. And I am starving. So like this video, subscribe to the channel. And if you make this recipe, please tag me and Adam on Instagram so we can see what you came up with. But without further ado, let's get into it. We are going to start by having our yeast rise. I know Adam doesn't do that in his video. However, I like to have that peace of mind that my yeast is rising. So we're gonna weigh out 85 grams of milk. I use 1%. Why do you use 1%, Nick? Well, I want to have a little bit of fat so there's still some flavor there, cause fat is flavor, but not have the calories of a whole milk. Now every microwave is different, but mine takes about 25 seconds to get to that 110 to 120 degree range, which is what we're looking for. I would say if you are getting more into cooking, you should get a food thermometer because you could use this for liquid, you could use this for meat, you could use it for pretty much anything and it's $10 or 12 bucks shipped to your house on Amazon. For anyone that hasn't used yeast before, all of my fellow anabolic cookers or chefs, don't be afraid of the yeast. And it's actually a really cool experience the first time you do it. While that's rising, we're going to make our dry ingredients for the dough. 110 grams of flour, two grams of salt. Now he also puts sugar in his. Instead, I'm gonna put swerve. It's the same thing to me, adds that same type of sweetness. And I'm going to put three grams in there. Our last thing is some garlic powder. I'm going to put about one gram in here. Now I'm just gonna mix this together real quick. I have been watching a lot of different dough recipes and a lot of the more recent ones have been letting the dough rise when you just barely get the dough together to let like the gluten structures, uh, the gluten structures form. Add this stuff together, barely get it together. It doesn't have to be fully incorporated. You don't have to knead it yet. And I'm gonna have it sit in here for 15 minutes. This is an optional part I don't know if Adam, if you watch this video, you can tell me if that's correct or not, where you get more of a rise out of it. I'm not as educated as I want to be, and I would love to, to learn new things. And so Adam, since you're like the pizza guy, please let me know. It's going to seem too wet to start out, but just keep mixing it in. And what I like to use is this little rubber or whatever spatula to try and get all this dry stuff off of the edges and get it into the dough ball. Now, most of my subs work out or go to the gym or whatever the case may be. This is a great thing to do if you get out of work and you get home from the gym. Do this right when you get back to the house. So then you can do this, let it rise for 15 minutes, take a shower, come back, knead the dough, wash your dishes, let it sit for about an hour, do whatever you have to do. And then you're essentially ready to put it in the pan, let it rise one more time and cook. Now, this stuff's gonna stick to your hands. I also like to use a bread scraper because when you try to start getting the stuff off of your hands with the rubber spatula, the spatula just bends. So what I do is literally just scrape it right off my hands. So this is all barely together here. I'm gonna scrape my hands one more time. I'm gonna cover it with saran wrap. And I'm gonna put it in my microwave and let it sit since that's a warm place for it to be. And in the meantime, we'll make our sauce. 
San Marzano whole peeled tomatoes crushed into a bowl, tomato paste, olive oil, garlic, oregano, salt, onion powder, crushed red pepper, artificial sweetener of choice, and mix it all together. We are back, it's time to knead our dough. And as you can see, it's puffed up a little bit, but it's super scraggly, it's not smooth. We're gonna get it smooth here after we knead it. So literally all I'm doing is rolling it into each other, facing it the other way and rolling it, because you want everything to be kneaded evenly. Now this takes about eight minutes. So what I do like to do is I will legitimately put on an eight minute timer so I don't short change this because it feels like you've been kneading for a while, but really it's only been a couple minutes. The main difference between my dough and sauce and Adam's is that he uses olive oil, which of course it tastes great and it does make it better, but my sauce still tastes great and you just don't get that extra calories in it. I'm just trying to give different options for people so they can have lower calorie foods and still fit it into their daily diet where I've been eating pizza all week and I'm down about a pound and a half and I've been eating half of a 10 inch pizza to a full 10 inch pizza every single day. That's what I would like you guys to do. So let's fast forward through me kneading this dough and I'll show you what comes next. Let's do the window test. For those that haven't made dough before, the window test is when you shine your light and spread this, and if it's not tearing, then you're good. And I don't know if you can see, but this is super duper thin and not tearing whatsoever. So this dough is ready to rise. So I'm gonna mix it back in just for a few rolls here. So everything's combined. To minimize calories, all you need, oil will spread everywhere. All you need is like one, two. Two quarter seconds and you spread it around in here so that when you take the dough out, it's not sticking. And just spread it around and roll it around your bowl. All right, nice, beautiful little dough. We want this to double in size. So what I'm going to do, put some saran wrap on the top of it, put it back in my microwave because that's a warm place so that it'll rise a little bit faster. It's been taking me about an hour, but it could take up to two hours depending how hot your kitchen is and where you place it. We're at about 15 minutes of work so far, and we almost have a pizza dough that's gonna be ready to be eaten. Homemade and absolutely delicious. I'll see you in about an hour. Okay, bye. Our dough is almost prepared. Now we need to shred our cheese. I will let Adam, when you go watch his video, explain why you should shred your cheese fresh but it is very important. If you don't see it in the actual like cheese section, you can go to the deli. And we need about a pound and I got two pounds. So I'm just gonna cut this in half and I'm gonna shred it up. This is gonna be so good, I cannot wait. So yeah, essentially just shred the whole damn thing. Now this is absolutely beautiful. Our dough has rised. Look how beautiful she is. Get a 10 inch non-stick pan and we're gonna spray a little olive oil in there. A little oil goes a long way as I was saying earlier. So I'm gonna do quarter second, quarter second, quarter second and I'm just gonna rub it around. Now we're gonna take our dough ball plopper right in here and we're just gonna spread it out. I start from the middle and start going to the outside. There's really no rhyme or reason how you do it as long as you spread it evenly. Obviously you don't want a sh thick sh ton of dough on this side and then thin barely any dough on this side. And we wanna try to get it a little bit up the sides because when we do cook the dough, it's gonna shrink up a little bit when you cook it. Just like chicken or any meat that you cook, it's never the size that it starts out to be. So this is what we got. Perfect. I did forget, since I'm in the middle of everything, to spray the top with olive oil. Again, we're going to go very light. This will keep the dough moist while it sits in there so the top doesn't dry out. Our crust is ready to get cooked. We're gonna put this bad boy on here at about medium heat, medium low. And how we're gonna check to see if this is done is we're gonna take one of the spatulas and we're gonna look underneath it in a couple minutes, but obviously it just started, so we'll check back in then. The goal here is to get a nice golden brown on the bottom, but almost burnt, like a little bit darker. Now while this is going, I'm going to start the broiler, so by the time everything is ready, 
to be put into the oven. The broiler is nice and hot. I'm also gonna get out our sauce, our cheese, get everything ready to go and just start topping. So we're gonna weigh out four ounces of cheese. This is the fat-free cheese. The reason we wanna use the fat-free cheese, a lot less calories and a lot of protein. Now I'm gonna move this fat-free cheese over to the side and at the same time, I'm gonna weigh out our part skim, a little moisture mozzarella, and we're gonna do four ounces of this as well. So if you don't like cheese, this isn't the recipe for you. But if you love cheese, this is exactly the recipe for you. This is 0% skimpington on cheese. It is absolutely every single bite cheesy. The cheese pulls on this pizza are going to be absolutely amazing. And as you can tell, I am starving and cannot wait. Now we're starting to get nice and brown. Look at that. We're probably about another minute away here. Perfect. See how it's almost too dark brown? This is excellent. See how it moves around? It's going to be so easy to get out once we are done. You can put as much sauce as you want. I've, I've been doing about 100 grams. I think it's perfect. So I just put this in the middle here and you start from the middle and you push it out. So we got our cheeses way out, weighed out. And this is all about layering. Josh hates or iron musket, whatever you want to call him, hates fat-free cheese because it doesn't taste like anything. And if I literally put this in my mouth right now, it does not taste good because it's fat-free, doesn't have any flavor. But when you put it in between a crust that's full of flavor, sauce that is extremely full of flavor, and then regular high quality cheese, you are not going to notice the fat-free cheese whatsoever but it is going to help you make those gains because there's nine grams of protein per serving while only having 45 calories. So now that our layer is down a fat-free cheese, we're gonna put our layer low fat cheese. Now I'm just gonna kind of spread it out a little bit. As it melts, it'll go across the way. You still get that great brownness on the top because all of the actual fat filled cheese is on the top. So you're still gonna get that beautiful golden brown. Now I said three to four minutes, so make sure you check after three minutes, how this is doing. Everyone's ovens are different, heat differently, broiler, hotness, whatever is different. So make sure you check on it. And so I don't forget, and I'm in the middle of trying to record a video, timer, three minutes, let's get it. So try to put it in the very center here. Obviously you can't see it because I'm way down here. So that your pizza cooks evenly. Oh, shit. I forgot our Parmesan. With my pizza, I'm gonna put the Parmesan on the top, but you should put the Parmesan on top of the sauce. Five grams of Parm is what we're putting on the sauce. It's only 20 calories, but Parmesan adds a crap ton of flavor. Let's see what we got. Oh my God. Three minutes. Beautiful, perfect, brown all over. Looks like we just ordered out at one of the great pizza places in Chicago. This is beautiful. All in nonstick pan. All right, now we want to get this right onto a rack so that the crust doesn't get all soggy. Now, if you forget to take it out, Adam does say, and I did do it, and it worked perfectly. You just heat it back up for another minute or two until you hear that sizzling on the bottom, and you know the crust is hard again. And I left one out for about an hour to try and reheat it and see the, rehe the reheatability of it. And legit, I did what I just told you, a minute or two in here, I stuck it back under the broiler for like a minute and a half, and it was legitimately brand new. The crust on the bottom was still crunchy. The top had a beautiful meltiness to it, like it just got pulled out of the oven for the first time, just like this. It was honestly perfect. And I'm gonna let these cool down, get this one into a rack, and I'll be back in a minute. So right off the bat, Adam's is bigger. His was much easier to spread out. I'm guessing it's because of the olive oil. But this one, when I try to spread it out, it definitely has more of a pop snap back. They both feel like they have the same crispiness. It's been sitting for a couple minutes now. It's really hard when you're shooting a video to be able to eat it fresh, fresh. We're about as close as we're gonna get. But you could even hear that there's still crunchiness to it. Now, do I expect mine to be better than his? No. My whole point of my channel is to get recipes at least to be eight out of 10 as good as the full fat, whatever version. I'm gonna start with his pizza first. We got a little bit of char on the bottom. There's a little part that's a little darker than I would like, but it's very, very small. 
But overall, I love the brownness on the bottom of his. Bottom of mine still has brownness, not the same amount. That could be the skillet. That's probably the olive oil as well in combination with the skillet versus the uh, other pan. I could have left this for another minute, possibly. But regardless, both bottoms are definitely done. Definitely perfect. I see that's the whole thing. The skillet's supposed to cook evenly, but it's way more crunchy in the middle. I've been having this so much the last few days. I could tell that this is almost identical to what mine tastes like. You definitely still got some air pockets. It's really damn good. Especially for a plain cheese pizza. I obviously do wish there was a little bit more cheese, but I think you can never have enough cheese. So that's just me. Yeah, that's good as hell. The real difference right now is gonna be the parm on the top. I still think this is gonna be really good. You can tell the cheese is better on this one as I'm like taking a bite for bite. But we're talking, this is like a nine out of 10. If this is a 10 out of 10, we're very close. And if this wasn't in the equation, this would be a 10 out of 10 for me. I mean, the only real difference is the olive oil more than anything else. He has a topping that he usually puts on his. I didn't want to make it that like uneven. So I was trying to make it as even as possible as far as the regular ingredients went. If you want, again, go check out his video. This one's better. This one is 90% as good. I would love Adam to try out my way and see what he thinks. There's really not a big difference in my opinion. You still have olive oil in there. You just use it as minimally as possible. That's really not a big deal besides the fact that there's like an extra, I don't know, 100 to 200 calories worth of olive oil in his sauce, which on a pizza like this, when you're layering everything like this, I don't think it makes that much of a flavor difference. Does it take it from a nine to a 10? Yes. But if you're getting a nine still and you're saving hundreds of calories and you're able to eat this on a daily basis, why wouldn't you? So let's get to the macros. All right, so Adam's pizza is 1,334 calories for the entire pizza, 70 grams of protein, 102 carbs, 76 grams of fat. 76 grams of fat. Mine for the entire thing is 997 calories, 81 and a half grams of protein, 100 grams of carbs, 29 grams of fat. That's almost 50 grams of fat, 45 grams of fat less. Just by substituting no olive oil and half of the cheese being fat-free cheese. It's as simple as that, not putting as much olive oil in the sauce either, but it's really as simple as that. How can I take the fat out, but not take all of it out, but still make it super flavorful and still make it work perfectly? This is it, guarantee you, make it, you're gonna love it. And his has 70 grams of protein for 335 more calories approximately. Mine has 80 grams of protein. So I have 10 more grams of protein for over 300 calories less. But you could easily make this, eat half of it, save the other half, as I said, put it back on that pan for two minutes, let it sizzle again, throw it back in the broiler for a minute or two, and it's gonna be like brand new. So you'll have two servings here or if you have a girlfriend, a roommate, whatever, kids, whoever you're cooking for, you can easily make this work to where you make two of these pizzas, you make three of these pizzas, you can meal prep the dough and have it sit in the fridge for up to a week. So you can make five of the doughs, the sauce is already ready for the next five, and the cheese, you just gotta grate more cheese, that's it. It takes you about half an hour in actual work, and you have a homemade, delicious pizza or ready to go that I could guarantee if you tell your friend that came over, or if you don't tell, should I say, that you have pizza and you don't tell them that it's homemade, I guarantee they're gonna think it's from somewhere and ask you where it's from. Guarantee you. Shout out to Adam for the awesome recipe. Definitely check out Adam's channel. He is a wizard with trying to make complicated things easy. He was a professor back in the day, not even that long ago, like a year ago. So he's great at teaching, and he also knows how to make these recipes simple so you can make them at home. This is, I've been experimenting with pizzas for about a month now, and this was by far the easiest to make, and I just highly recommend it. You got the homemade sauce and everything coming together so perfectly. We got more anabolic recipes on the way. I cannot wait to see you in that next video, but until next time, I will see 
you in that next one. Do see.